I would just say that uh, I don't think our democracy can afford to wait until 2027 when we see these over 350 bills that have been introduced in states across uh, the country, uh, with now two of them having passed in, um, in states of Georgia and the state of Florida, with one on its way in Texas. Um, and I will say, in a number of the provisions in the manager amendment, which we've gotten some support for certain provisions in it, but not all of them, we did extend deadlines um, just to allow for more time for implementation, especially in rural areas um, of small jurisdictions with under 3,000 people. Uh, we made some significant changes. But to simply uh, say uh, that we're going to wait till 2027, uh, which is a significant time away for the entire bill. I think that just doesn't make sense uh, to me, uh, given that uh, Jocelyn Benson, the Secretary of State of Michigan, uh, said that she was able to make these changes in a year. Um, the fact that we have uh, 15 states, uh, including Alaska and Georgia, that already have uh, automatic uh, registration, 21 states having same-day voter registration, including Idaho, Wyoming, and Iowa. 43 states that have early voting with the average length of 19 days. 34 states requiring no excuse voting by mail in 2019, including Florida and Alaska. And 45 did in 2020 during the pandemic. 40 states have online registration, including Alabama, Florida, and Iowa. And our point is this is clearly workable, but there are some states uh, that aren't doing these things. And we all know things like, um, which many Republicans talked to me about after the 2020 election, uh, the states waiting so long uh, to start counting the ballots uh, created a lot of confusion nationally in a presidential election. That's one of the things that we fix, uh, something that people have reached out to me about on the other side of the aisle. And I just think that uh, we don't want to wait till 2027 um, to make these changes. I suggest that the sense of urgency may be for a different reason, Madam Chair. And I'm going to quote a political article just, uh, that was just recently published May 3rd. I quote, many in the party, referring to the Democrat Party, privately worry that frontline Democrats, like Warnock, or House Democrats that are vulnerable to redistricting, could lose their seats in Congress if Congress doesn't pass this legislation. I believe that's the concern here. I think this is an attempt to change the rules while you have this slimmest majority and put in place a system that's going to make it much easier to hold on to that power. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. This is something I would expect from communist China or from Venezuela's Maduro. That's exactly what Maduro did. Okay, that's so what, what I see is going on around the country right now is attempts to limit votes. And I, you know, elections that I've seen in the past when a party loses a presidential election in a major way or they suddenly lose states like Georgia since you brought up Senator Warnick, uh, they step back and they say, okay, what do we have to do to reach out to voters in a different way? What is it about our positions on issues uh, that caused us to lose the presidential race? Or how do we do a better job of communicating with voters? Or what should our candidates be when we put them up? Um, that's usually what parties do when they look back, both on the Democratic and Republican side in the past after an election. And instead, what I see here with these uh, voter limitations and the impingement on the freedom to vote in these states, it's instead looking at it the opposite way. And that is saying, okay, a bunch of people voted in 2020 because they figured out uh, and they made it easier for them to vote by mail or they didn't have to get uh, notary signatures through a hospital window uh, while they had COVID in order to get an absentee ballot, or they allowed for early voting in bigger ways because it was more healthy and safer in the middle of a pandemic. And so what I see now is a rolling back of those changes. Um, and to me, um, the answer should not be, let's make sure these people don't vote again. The answer should be, how do we reach out to people to get them on our side to vote for us? So that's why I have a problem with waiting on this. Madam Chairman. Senator Cruz, I just knew you'd want to respond to uh, that. Well, with all respect, that, that was a wildly inaccurate and partisan assessment of what is occurring. And I would note that this bill was drafted following the 2016 election, hmm. after Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton. And 
senator from Minnesota suggested when a party loses, they reassess their positions. The Democratic Party didn't do that. The Democratic Party insisted for four years that Hillary won and the election was stolen, and it was Russia that stole it. And for four years, we heard that over you and over and over You must not have been again. in the same electoral you, college room as me. Uh, Madam I, Chairman, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking. You voted. Uh, okay. The, the Democratic Party did not reassess any policies, but instead, the response to losing that election in 2016 was to introduce this bill to cause millions of illegal immigrants to be registered to vote, to vote for Democrats, to cause felons and criminals to be registered to vote, to vote for Democrats. And I would note that now in the 2020 election, there were a number of closely competitive Senate races, including in the state of Iowa, including in the state of North Carolina, inclu including in the state of Alaska, uh, including in the state of Montana, that Democrats spent hundreds of millions of dollars trying to win, and they lost. And so what does this bill try to do? change the electorates and let's get a whole bunch of illegal voters to change the composition of the electorate along with a partisan federal election commission that will be counted on the chuck schumer election commission like clockwork there will be an october surprise who are the vulnerable republicans who are republicans in close races boom the chuck schumer federal election commission will announce investigations and and fines directed against them this is a brazen power grab by the Democrats because you've decided democracy isn't worth it. You want to fix the game so the voters don't have control over our election. Okay, so I have so much issues with what you just said because I'm thinking back to 2016 uh, when, in fact, Hillary Clinton conceded the election, when, in fact, we had an electoral college. I know because uh, Senator Blunt and I uh, were in charge of it and uh, Vice President then, Vice President Biden, was presiding over it, and it went through. We didn't object to those results. Then let's fast forward to the day of the insurrection, to January 6, when in fact you, Senator Cruz, not all of your colleagues here today, you were contesting the Electoral College. You were leading one of the leaders on the effort to say that the election uh, results were not correct. Um, and so you wonder uh, why we want to make sure that people have the right to vote. Well, it's because of this kind of rhetoric and this kind of behavior and an insurrection at the Capitol and a former president that is still maintaining that he somehow won the election when we all know it's not true. And so that's why, if you ask why we are still interested in protecting our democracy from that day of January 6th on, I think that's your answer. Well, Chairman Klobuchar, this bill had nothing to do with the 2020 election because it was drafted four years earlier. This bill has everything to do with Democrats trying to rig the election to stay in power and to disenfranchise voters. That's what this election is about. And by the way, Hillary Clinton insisted after the election she didn't lose. And not only that, Hillary Clinton advised Joe Biden, under no circumstances should you concede. So, 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 so the ahistorical rewriting uh, 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 of what occurred is, is not accurate, and rigging the system to take away the rights of voters, this is designed to keep Democrats in power for a hundred years, and it is fundamentally corrupt, and it is worth noting that when Republicans had a much bigger majority than Democrats have right now, Democrats have a six-seat majority in the House and a 50-50 slimmest possible majority in the Senate. We made no effort to rig the system the way Democrats are doing, and, and that is dis, dishonoring the promise we made to our constituents.